Okay, good morning. Uh, I'm Matteo Meucci from HOWASP and uh, thank you FOSDEM for inviting me to speak here. It's my first time here in FOSDEM and uh, uh, I think it's a con congratulations for your university because it's very nice and uh, I would like to study here but I study in Italy, in Bologna. So, this is the agenda. I would like in, to introduce you uh, the OWAS project and uh, the new OWAS testing guide that is a methodology to, to test the security of a web application. Uh, so I introduce how to test a web application, a uh, short introduction, and, and then uh, I would like to in, introduce how to improve software security in your uh, software development life cycle. And then uh, question and answers. Okay, two words about me. I, I founded the OWASP Italy uh, chapter in 2005, and uh, I lead the testing guide uh, project from two years. And in the spare time, I work for Mind and Security, that is an application security company. So, who knows about OWASP? Oh, great, okay. <laughs> So OWASP stands for the Open Web Application Security Project and uh, is a project uh, dedicated to find and, and fighting the causes of insecure software. So uh, we, we have an OWASP foundation and uh, everyone is a volunteer inside OWASP, everyone can participate. So everything we do is free and open source. So maybe is that for reason that we are here now? <laughs> maybe. Okay. Uh, so, the main object of OWASP is developing tools, standards, and, and uh, documentation related to web application security. We have uh, thousands of active members all around the world. We have uh, more than 100 uh, uh, chapters around the world and uh, millions of it on the, our uh, site. So, if we think at OWASP, we have uh, four areas. Uh, we have an area uh, called education, in which uh, we uh, develop the first tool for the uh, education of people on web application security. For example, the OWAS Top 10 uh, tell you about uh, uh, um, the 10 most uh, uh, the 10 vulnerability of the web application. So, for example, from cross-site scripting, SQL injection, and so on tell you uh, what, what are these vulnerabilities and how you can protect about it. Then we do training, we do conferences, so we next conference is in Poland in, uh, with uh, confidence and uh, we develop WGOT that is uh, an application that is uh, vulnerable to web application uh, security so you can test uh, on your own uh, the vulnerability. Uh, this software also, of the other is uh, free available on uh, www.owasp.org. Then uh, we have a community, we have a lot of chapters and uh, we have a lot of uh, project incubator. And uh, we have a wiki portal so everyone can uh, edit uh, the contents of the, edit the, wiki, the wiki portal. Then we have a building area and uh, we have uh, the OWASP building guide, that is a guide that tells you how uh, de develop secure software. There is a, a code review guide that tells you how to uh, review the code for the security. Then there, is, there are other projects uh, like Horizon, that is uh, a tool that um, do a static analysis of the code. And then uh, for the verification area, we have the, the testing guide, that is uh, the, um, the core of the presentation. And uh, we have a web scarab, that is a, a tool, is a, an HTTP proxy that uh, run, uh, runs on uh, your local machine and uh, can intercept all the HTTP requests from the client to the, to the server. So you can uh, see all the requests and edit it and uh, see how the server can uh, respond. So Web Scarab and the testing guide are together uh, the, the framework for the testing. The testing guide is a methodology and the Web Scarab is a king tool for, for, the, for the tester. Then we do validation and certification, but there are new, new items. So the testing guide is free and open. So we, we use the Creative Commons uh, uh, 
So everything is uh, open and free. You can download everything we, we, we do. It's just a puzzle uh, of the piece. It's just a piece of, of a puzzle. So you can see there, um, there are a lot of tools. And there is the building guide, the code review guide, and the testing guide. Here, the OWASP community, we have a lot of chapters all around the world in which we can debate the web application security and uh, we organize conferences locally, uh, etc. Now, the total projects in OWASP are 88. Um, 42 related to tools and uh, 32 related to doc documentations. Uh, and nine for technology and five for the activities inside the OWASP uh, Foundation. So all these projects are sponsored by the OWASP Foundation because uh, we, we collect money from the conferences and uh, uh, may, maybe from, from the conferences. And uh, so we, uh, OWASP now give some, uh, some money to the, the leader that developed the, uh, uh, the documentation documentation or tool. Now the goal is to improve our, uh, the quality of uh, our projects. So now uh, all the projects are labeled uh, alpha, beta, or release. For example, the OWASP testing guys is a, a release project. And uh, so now the, our goal is uh, to increase the quality and uh, create uh, professional OWASP books. So you can download uh, from the site the PDF, for example, of the testing guide, or you can buy from lulu.com the, 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 the book that is uh, at the price of uh, the, the printing. So it's less than $10, something like that. OK. So this is, uh, now we, we will talk about the testing guide. Uh, just a little history. Uh, the testing guide starts from January 2004 from uh, Daniel Kapber that delivered the, um, write the first uh, testing guide that was uh, 20 pages uh, in which uh, he collects uh, all the tests to do on the application. And then uh, in uh, J July the 40th, uh, we, we developed the, the version 1.1 and uh, in December 2006, we decided to, de to develop a new project that is uh, the version 2. It is more and more big than, uh, than the other version. And uh, now, uh, in last December, we developed the version 3. Uh, you, can, you can see from here that uh, the, 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 complex, the complexity of the project. Uh, from, from the beginning, uh, is, we, we release a, a, document, a document of uh, 10, 20 pages, then uh, 30, then uh, more than 250, and now we are nearly 350. So the complexity of the uh, articles and the, and the methodology is growing, it's growing. Uh, what, what are the goals of the OWASP, uh, OWASP testing? Uh, we would like to create a complete new project focused on web application penetration testing. And uh, uh, the goal is to, um, we, we don't like to, to see the security as a black, a black heart. So we would like to share with the tester and with the auditor and uh, with the other uh, that are involved in the, uh, in the audit of the application, a common methodology. So the, the question is here to, uh, try, uh, to develop a, a, a methodology that is completely open. Okay, here the action plan. Uh, the, the last ver version, so the version two, takes about uh, three, four months to, de to the develop. And uh, we begin to, with a brainstorming to understand uh, which, which is the, the methodology. So uh, we collect all the uh, web application penetration test and, uh, experts and uh, we, de we decide to, to, together to develop a common methodology. So uh, the first stage is very complex because we have to collect all the ideas of the other and uh, create the methodology because uh, we, we don't like to we, we, we didn't want to create the, my methodology on your methodology, but the community methodology. So it's not uh, so easy. 
Then, uh, we, when we decide the index and the templates, we write down the articles on the wiki model. We review the articles, review all the guides, and then we write it in doc uh, format and uh, PDF, and then we release the candidate and so on. The testing guide version 3 started on uh, April 2008, and uh, uh, firstly, we do a, a OWASP leaders brainstorming about uh, how to improve the version 2, and we do a call for participation. We had uh, 21 authors, and uh, in the version 2, we had uh, nearly 50 authors, so we, the authors are less. Then we describe, we discuss all the article, and uh, um, here you can see that there is a, an action plan about this guide. So here is uh, the, the book uh, that you can download uh, from the site in the PDF. Uh, you can see there is introduction, etc. And uh, chapter four is uh, the core of the book, in which we describe the web application penetration testing methodology. And uh, then we focus on uh, how to write the reports. How, when you find all uh, the vulnerabilities on a web application, uh, we decide also to write a methodology in, uh, uh, to describe how to write a report, how to collect uh, the vulnerability, how to value the risk associated with uh, each vulnerability, uh, etc. Because uh, it's fundamental to present the result in the right manner. Then we have uh, four uh, appendix. Uh, we describe all the testing tools that we use. Uh, Web Scarab is uh, the, king, the king tool, but there are a lot of other tools. For example, for SQL injection, we have SQL Ninja, we have SQL Map, uh, and so on. Then uh, the reading, the FATZIN vector, and then code and injection. Now we go to see uh, it better. The difference from the version 2 and the version 3. In the version 2, we had eight subcategories, and now we have 10 subcategories. We create the configuration management testing and the authorization testing and the encoded appendix. So here. I would like to show the index. Okay. Yet we describe the OBS testing framework and so on. And uh, here you can see that uh, uh, we start from the information gathering, that is the, the first category of the test, and is uh, the passive test, and it's not an active test. In the information gathering, we collect all the information about the application, so we understand all the entry points, uh, where is the application, because maybe we, uh, the, the target is only an, an IP address, so we have to understand where is uh, the application, in which port is running, and so on. Okay. Then we, we do configuration management testing. For example, we go to uh, see the strength of the SSL protocol implemented. Uh, we go to, to implement the infrastructure, configuration management testing, and so on. And then we go for the authentication testing. And here we have uh, we, we, we have split it in 10 uh, uh, controls to, to, to perform. Uh, um, the first one is uh, to perform the credential transport uh, over an encrypted channel. For example, if the, when you have a, a username and password uh, to verify if, uh, if the user name and password uh, information uh, goes over an, an, an encrypted channel. And then we go for testing for user enumeration. For example, if you uh, know um, a valid user and uh, if you try a, a not valid user uh, with the wrong password, maybe the application responds in a different manner. So you can understand that the user is uh, uh, available on the application and you can enumerate a lot of uh, uh, user. Then we can, we can do the default or guessable attack. attack. Okay. Uh, just a flash here, in the second part, I will show some examples, so I go a little bit fast. 
Then we do the session management testing. You know that uh, web application running on uh, over HTTP, that, and the HTTP protocol is a stateless, stateless protocol. So you have to implement your own uh, state, or you use the framework, uh, for example, from J2E or .NET. Uh, there is a session management mechanism. So we, here we, we test the strengths of this mechanism of the session management. Then we do authorization testing. When a user is authenticated on my application, I have to test if the user can do something that is not authorized for. Maybe he can read a PDF that is private, or he can do some action that is valid from only from the administration, and so on. Then we do data validation testing. Data validation testing is the big one. Uh, I, I, maybe I, I didn't find an application that suffers from a data validation vulnerabilities. It's, uh, it's quite impossible because uh, uh, here we test uh, all the uh, entry point of the application and we understand if uh, the, how the, the application validate this information before doing a particular action. For example, uh, create a SQL query on the database or create an output uh, on the browser. So if the validation is not correct, we can perform a cross-site scripting or a SQL injection and so on. So here we describe also for the SQL injection uh, how to test the Oracle, how to test uh, MySQL, uh, SQL Server and so on. Here are all the other uh, data validation testing. Then uh, we describe the Daniel service testing. Usually, in the, we don't, we didn't uh, perform uh, the Daniel service testing because we uh, we, we touch the the application in uh, in um, not in the environment. Uh, the application is running, so it's, uh, it's not very important to un to understand if uh, software of Daniel service. Then, when there is a web, when we are a web service, we test also the web services. So here we describe how to test web services, and if we have an Ajax application, we we describe how to test the Ajax. And then, uh, chapter five describe how to write reports and evaluate evaluate the real risk. So here is uh, the index of of the methodology. So, what is a web application penetration testing? Uh, it's a process. It's a process that uh, yeah, um, involves an active analysis of the application to find the weakness and the vulnerabilities. It's a, a, black, a black box process. So, in, uh, we don't know uh, the source code of the application. We know only the URL on the IP address where the application is running. So. Uh, this approach is a black box approach, and uh, yeah, for example, the code review testing is a white box approach. When uh, that means that you know everything about the code, so you can uh, uh, read the code, understand uh, uh, when uh, a call is fun a function is called, uh, etc. You can understand everything about the code. Here, we don't know nothing. So uh, the methodology. Uh, describe it here uh, with the tool uh, is uh, together web application testing. Our approach in writing the guide is open and collaborative. Uh, so you know everything can uh, give his contribution and uh, collaborative because uh, we decide together what to write and uh, it's not uh, uh, it's a community uh, methodology. Then we would like to create a testing methodology that was consistent and repeatable under the time. So if I test an application with this methodology, we would like to have the same results from another uh, tester. And uh, yeah, the quality is uh, another target. Here, for example, a testing paragraph template. Uh, with, uh, in, initially, we describe uh, we have a brief summary of, the, uh, of what we want to test. We describe the issue, and we describe from a black box testing example and gray box testing example, and then we, uh, 
we collect all the references and the tool that are useful for this kind of test. For example, for example, here is one of the paragraphs about the cross-site scripting, and here we describe what is a cross-site scripting with inside the brief summary. We describe the issue, so um, how uh, you, you can test for the cross-site scripting. And here, black box testing, the methodology. So you have to detect uh, the, the input vector and to uh, inject some script to understand how uh, the application reflects your information on your browser. And uh, for example, here, here is an example where, for example, you have the URL where user equal uh, Mr. Smith, and uh, Mr. Smith is reflected on the uh, browser. So, for example, you can uh, write down script alert uh, one two three slash script instead Mr. Smith, and if you collect this kind of uh, screenshot, uh, you understand that the application doesn't correct validate uh, the output. So you can uh, create a, a reflected cross-site scripting. Okay. Here are other examples, and uh, here are references. So you can read the white paper and the tools. Here again, WebScalab, and the OWASP called 9000 is a, a, another free tool that uh, is a collection of uh, web application security testing for the cross-site scripting, so you can use it, etc. Okay. Okay, here are the difference, uh, because we, we, we describe also the gray box uh, testing. For example, if, if we know the session ID generation algorithm, we know something about the application. So it's uh, a something of a gray box testing. Okay, but again, the white box testing is not uh, our, the target of this guide, but the code review guide, that is another guide of OWASP, uh, is, is focused on the uh, white box testing. So, now I introduce the methodology with some examples. We start, uh, I say that we start from the information gathering, so the first phase in the security assessment is uh, to play with the application, with uh, a tool like WebScarab or Idle tool, and understand how the application answers to you, and, uh, and to find all the tree of the application, so uh, all the directory uh, accessible uh, from the public, uh, etc. So you can write down all the entry points of the application. Entry points, uh, it's, uh, me, I mean the entry points, for example, when there is a, a form on the web page, uh, uh, when you insert username and password, username and password are two entry points of the application, and these are uh, something that you have to test, for example, for data validation. So you can understand how the application uh, is functioning uh, during the information gathering, and then uh, you use uh, a spider and robots and crawlers to uh, understand uh, everything about the application, and then uh, uh, it, uh, once identified the application uh, entry points, we do web application fingerprinting to understand uh, which are the web server, the application server running uh, on the application. And then we do application discovery and analysis of error codes uh, that are interesting, for example, when you um, try to request something particular and the application respond with, uh, for example, Microsoft DB all, uh, all uh, error, you understand that the, there is uh, some uh, uh, kind of database uh, at the back end and uh, maybe you can collect information about the name of the table and uh, you can write down for the test for the SQL injection. So here you collect many, many information about the, your application. Here, for example, if you, um, if you perform an HTTP head request uh, from, from your target, you, you, the, the answer is something like that. And here, for example, you can understand that there is Apache version 1.3.3, and there is a Unix server, and there is a Red Hat, etc. But 
for example, what, is, uh, what if uh, I do the same request and uh, the header of the server is obfuscated? For example, here you can see on the third line of obfuscated and uh, obfuscated, etc. Uh, also, we can understand uh, that uh, which is the server because uh, the the header is uh, in, in a different manner. So, for example, a Apache uh, 1.3.23 uh, uh, answers answer with date as fair as fair field in the in the header, and and so on. So you can understand uh, which are the platform. Then we do configuration management testing. So, for example, the, uh, the SSL strength of the your application, we do DB listener testing, infrastructure, infrastructure configuration management. Uh, for example, we, we do also the old uh, backup and, uh, and reference files that we find uh, quite a, a lot on the application. For example, if uh, the login is login.jsp, uh, if, if you uh, try to request login.back or login.hold, maybe you can uh, find this uh, information and maybe there are some information uh, confidential inside these, uh, uh, these uh, referenced uh, files. So you can and, uh, and once again found uh, uh, useful information for the test. Then we test, for example, for HTTP methods. Uh, for example, if put or delete is uh, admitted on your uh, web application, and maybe you can do a other kind of test. Here, for example, uh, we can find uh, an access to Tomcat admin interface from the, uh, from the internet, maybe. Or here, from uh, Nexus output, uh, we can um, uh, extract uh, all the um, ciphers that uh, the, the, the server admit. Here, for example, you, you can see that there is a, a, a DES and a MD5 uh, cryptography algorithm and hashing algorithm that are quite uh, old, and uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's better don't, don't use it. Then we test the session management. Uh, session management is a critical part of security test because uh, uh, the HTTP is the stateless, and so you have to understand how the application implement the, 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 the state of the, of the user that is authenticated on the application. So we test for the session management sch schemes, for the key attributes, for example, if uh, when I uh, authenticate on an application, uh, I understand if uh, uh, I go to see if uh, when the, dire the directive set cookie, I, I go to see if the, the cookie is secure, is uh, HTTP only, if there is a date of um, in which is valid or not, and these are all attributes that uh, you have to put on your cookie. Then we test for session fixation for exposed var variable and cross-site request forgery. Now we see some example. Here, for example, on the right we have a web application and on the left there is a, a, a user a, we, that uh, holds his uh, username and password. Here uh, I post my username and password uh, via HTTPS uh, on the application and uh, on the bottom you can see uh, the, the parameter, uh, username and password. Then the web application verify the credential, and if it's okay, the web application will generate a cookie and uh, says, welcome to Mario Rossi, and if you look at the header of the, the answer of the web application, you can see something like that, a set cookie, uh, authentication equals something, a, a string of uh, characters that will be set on the browser of the user. So, for example, if I request uh, many, many uh, cookies uh, of the application, uh, for example, using uh, WebScarab, you can collect a, a lot of cookies, 100, 1,000 uh, of, the, of the application, so you can understand how the application generates the cookie. Maybe the, the application uh, generates the same cookie every time. Uh, we don't find it. But, uh, or there is a linearity in, in the generation. Here, for example, is a, a simple, very simple example. You can understand that uh, if I collect a lot of cookie, I can understand that there is a linearity in the, 
uh, in generation, so I, I can understand that the next cookie is uh, that one, just uh, plus two. So, for example, if uh, I, I am authenticated on the web application and I request uh, my money, how much money I have inside the bank, if, uh, <laughs> if I understand the, the mechanism of the session, I can uh, modify that with the uh, web scarab. So here yeah, I send to the web application not my cookies, no, no, not my ticket, ma the ticket that I understand that is uh, from, uh, from another person. I don't know which person is, but I know that maybe there is an open session, so I can do a session hijacking. So the, the, the web application now verify my identity, not from uh, my username and password, but from the ticket. And uh, the, the ticket is related to Mario Verdi and not Mario Rossi. So Mario Rossi can see the, uh, the account of Mario Verdi. This is an example of a session hijacking. Okay, another example here, for example, and uh, a web application where you can uh, create your own uh, MMS and then send it uh, to, an, uh, to a user via a network uh, mobile phone. Uh, yeah, I don't describe everything, but uh, uh, the attacker has, uh, is the first one on, on the left and has a laptop and uh, a, a mobile phone. And uh, there is a, a, spoofed, uh, a spoofed identity with another phone, and there is a receiver with, a, with, a, with another phone. Here we can see that there is a, a, a stupid error, a stupid logic error, in which uh, uh, when I, I call the server, the servlet for the payment, uh, here you can see that I send a cookie that uh, there is inside my uh, MSISDN, so my telephone number. Uh, so I send him a session ID uh, and uh, my telephone number. What if uh, I modify that number with another number? And uh, we, s we saw that uh, uh, the application uh, doesn't uh, correct validate the session ID, but uh, uh, validate only the MSESDN. So the result is that the application charge another user and not me. So I can send a spoofed MMS to another person and pay a spoofed identity. Another test, uh, very interesting, is cross-site cross request forgery. That is a, a quite new vulnerability that is not so... Um, we found a lot of cross-site request forgery and uh, and I don't find the, the okay. I describe the, the, the test. Uh, we, we find the cross request forgery when the application permits to send a, a not, a, an, authorized, an authorized function uh, without authorize every time the, the user. And uh, we use the image tag attack to create uh, and, and force the user to commit that action. Now we, we, we see better. The first step is to find the vulnerability function. For example, if an application has a function to create a new user, or there is a, uh, and this is only for the admin, for example, or there is a found transfer, for example, of all the online banking uh, uh, site uh, permit you to uh, create a found transfer. We uh, we understand that there are uh, this, uh, this function. Then we analyze uh, how, uh, how I send this information to the uh, server. For example, when I click Submit, I want to create a, fund, a transfer fund from my fund to another fund with uh, uh, 1,000 uh, euro of, uh, of, of fund. I, I understand which, which is the, the request. So I can create a malicious email or malicious site in which I force the browser of, the, of another user to do that, that action. A resu the result is a, a, a not authorized action uh, executed, but the user don't understand that. Another example. So, for example, on online banking, 
Here is uh, the transfer fund mechanism. You can see the HTTPs, examplebank.com, uh, the transfer function in which uh, is, uh, the variable are EU and the two. This is very, very simple to understand the, the, the vulnerability. For example, if uh, I, I am authenticated and uh, create uh, a, a transfer to the count one, two, three, four, and uh, this is the amount, uh, the request is something like that. And I, the second step is that the user must be authenticated on the application, the user uh, which is subject to the attack must be authenticated on the application, and then I force him to uh, request the, uh, this, uh, this HTTP request using the image tag. Here, here is uh, the example. If I create a page like that, in which uh, inside the HTML, uh, the HTML I, insi I insert um, uh, the exact uh, request that I, I understand that the application uh, use for, uh, for a transfer money, I can uh, force a user to, uh, to request uh, these, these ones. So for example, if I send an email to, to one million users, and uh, maybe one, one user is reading this, uh, this, uh, uh, this email, uh, Consequently, if he is authenticated on the web application, the browser will execute the, this command. So uh, the, uh, the user don't understand that he is doing that. And uh, the application sees that uh, the correct user is doing that. So it's a big problem for, um, for, for say, hey, I'm, I, I didn't do that. But the application sees that you are authenticated and you are performing that action. So it's a big problem to understand that you are not request the, this kind of uh, transfer fund. So the cross request forgery is not uh, is a big vulnerability to uh, to test and to understand. Then authentication testing. If you have question, please, because uh, I see. Okay. Authentication testing, uh, we, we go to, to see how the, how the, authentication, te the authentication mechanism is uh, uh, robust uh, and so on. So we, we test the credential, we test for user enumeration, uh, for user account, uh, for the brute force of the uh, web application, uh, for bypassing the authentication schema. Here we can see some example, for example. Uh, here there is uh, an application with mutual digital, digital certification certificate, and uh, you can see the user with the, his own uh, public key certificate, and uh, the application install a public key certificate on the proxy uh, be, uh, behind the, 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 the application. So here we, we found, for example, that uh, the handshake SSL and mutual authentication is from the user browser and the proxy, so uh, on the layer uh, beside the application layer. And then uh, we analyzed that uh, there is a script client that collects the information of the user certificate. So there is something uh, ins inside the browser that uh, go to see the, cert the user certificate and send the user distinguished name to the uh, web application. So here you can see that there is an error, a logic error, because uh, here is the authentication post. Uh, when I, I send from my browser to the server, my user distinguished name, you, you can see in, in the last uh, row, user distinguished name equal 100. So I do and shake SSL with the proxy, but uh, uh, from an application layer point of view, the client send to the application is a distinguished name, and this is a big error because uh, the application uh, verify uh, with SSL the, uh, who, who is the user, and the application uh, must uh, see inside the, 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 the certificate of the user once that uh, the certificate is uh, val uh, verified, uh, who is the user, but not uh, uh, 
asking to the user, uh, which user are you? So, so here there is a, there is a big problem because uh, everyone here thinks that uh, the application is very secure because uh, I give to every user a digital certificate. So I, I think that uh, I implement a very secure mechanism, authentication mechanism. But uh, if you go inside and understand all the uh, requests that uh, the application is doing with the browser, uh, you can understand that there is a, a big security flow. Okay. Then we do authorization testing. We test for path traversal, for bypassing authorization schema, and testing for privilege escalation. Here, for example, here, you can see a site where you can download uh, something uh, from, uh, for example, from the file system of the uh, of, of the server, and what if you uh, do something like that? Uh, the ID parameter here is validated, or you can uh, insert everything and uh, maybe navigate inside the file system of the uh, web application. Here, for example, you can see the HTTP uh, password, so all the uh, running process, etc. Here, you can see how to, to bypass the authorization schema. So, for example, there is a, uh, an ad, ad user JSP is part of an, administ an administrative me menu. Uh, you can see that uh, an, an admin can uh, user uh, can uh, in create a new fake user with role tree and group zero uh, zero one, and. Uh, you have to test if uh, another user that has no, not uh, the privilege of uh, an, ad an admin can do the same. For example, if you understand that there, is, uh, there are some administrative function, uh, this test uh, wants to, to verify if uh, I do the same with no privileges, what, what, the, what is the answer of the application? The application is correctly validate the authorization mechanism or, or, or not. If you test it, maybe you can find a lot of uh, surprise. Another test is testing for privilege escalation. For example, here, the server response after the user authentication. Here, we, uh, the application uses uh, an hidden, uh, an hidden f uh, field uh, with the profile value. Uh, you can see syst inf uh, one. And this, uh, this value is, is the authorization parameter. And once again, is given on the client that uh, uh, you know everything that is on the client is available. So you, you have to verify that before uh, using this information. And uh, what uh, if the user modify uh, modify the value from system one to system three? And in this case, we understand that we begin uh, we, we become uh, the administrator of the application. So. Uh, once again, the authorization must be on the server side, not on the client side. Then we perform a business logic testing that uh, is, uh, okay, I run, I run it a little bit. Um, that is a test where we understand, for example, if there is a workflow inside the application and uh, yeah, for to execute a particular function, I have to um, go throughout uh, step one, step two, and step three. What if from the step step one go directly to step three? Uh, there is some some mechanism inside the application that verify that I have to do the step two. That that another test. Then we go for data validation testing. In, in here. As I say, uh, there are the main vulnerability. You can find the main vulnerability inside the application because the application are full of entry points, and it's very difficult to verify all the entry points and uh, and uh, uh, validate correctly uh, the output, uh, the the SQL query on the LDAP query, and so on. So here, for example, is a reflected cross-site scripting where in uh, this site there is a search field uh, at, at the bottom. And what if uh, I, I, I write something like that in, instead of uh, home, I research for home or something like that. Maybe I can insert a script 
And uh, if the output is something like that, uh, I understand that uh, the, the application doesn't validate the output. The storied cross site scripting here, for example, we have uh, a chat where you can see when you can insert a title, a message. What if the application permit to, to write an HTML and then you post uh, something like that? And then uh, when a user click on test uh, cross-site scripting, we will execute on the browser the, uh, the script. So for example, I can stall the uh, I can steal the, the, the cookie of the, 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 of, the, of the user, or I can manipulate all the browser of the user. Uh, okay, command injection. Here, an example from we, from we got. Uh, what if uh, there is something like that in which uh, I request uh, an, uh, a file on the file system and uh, simply add something like that? The result here is something like that. You, you access to the file, but you can access also to the uh, a volume of the hard disk. Then we do web services testing. Uh, there is a, a plugin inside WebScarab that is very useful uh, for the view uh, WSDL. So when you find the, the, the service, you can uh, use this plugin and you can insert maybe, you can see here, something inside the, uh, the web service, understand how the web service can, uh, uh, can answer to your request. Here are some, um, some XML structural texting. For example, if uh, I invert the tag of the, uh, of the XML request. Here, if I insert uh, a large payload of the, inside the XML, what, what is the answer of the, the service? Then, I, I will shortly introduce you uh, the, uh, the web application testing. Then uh, it's important to have a testing report model. So we, we create a OWASP risk rating model. It's uh, very easy. It's, uh, risk is uh, equal likelihood for the impact. And uh, we need to identify the risk, get the information about the vulnerability, the threat agent, and then understand the impact uh, of the successful exploit on the business. Okay, so we can understand what uh, what to fix, uh, what are the risk modes, etc. So here you can see that uh, the writing report uh, that we can uh, suggest is something like that: uh, an executive summary, a technical management overview, an assessment findings, and and uh, a table where for each category of test you can see all the vulnerabilities the name of the vulnerabilities and where is the effect, the effect item, where are the finding and the solution and the, the, the evaluated risk about the vulnerability. Okay, so how can you improve a software in a um, software development life cycle? The OBAS guidelines uh, can help you uh, to develop web application in a more secure manner. For the building guide tell you how to de develop the web application to protect for SQL injection, for example. The code review guide tell you from a white box test point of view how to test uh, the function that you are implementing. So uh, viewing the code, understand that there are security risk. And the testing guide tell you how to perform a SQL injection once that you have developed the, the web application and you don't know nothing about your web application. So inside the software development life cycle, we can divide in five phases from the define, design, develop, de deploy, and maintenance phase. Uh, the controls to implement are training on the, on the, u on the, uh, the user, uh, to do policy review guidelines, adopt uh, guidelines, uh, uh, doing code review and doing uh, web application penetration testing. So here is the big picture about the uh, SDLC and OWASP guidelines. Yeah, on the left, you can see that before the SDLC is uh, Im improved, the OWASP guidelines can gi give you an help on how you can uh, create the, your uh, development life cycle. And then uh, in the define and design phases, you can use the building guide to develop a secure software. And in the development phase, you can use the code review guide. And uh, before the deploy, uh, using the testing guide that uh, just described. 
as DLC is not a buy to bucks uh, to, to buy because um, uh, you know the uh, it's a very complex uh, process and uh, okay a sh uh, just a flash about the the PCI standard and the OWASP uh, you can see that uh, at uh, the control 6.5 the PCI standard uh, tell you to use the OWA standard inside your application that uh, you are collecting information about uh, credit card number and so on. So this guide is useful. We think that this guide is useful for the industry, for the pen, test, for the pen testers, so, so the company that do audit of the web application, and for the clients. So we have a, a, a methodology that is open and uh, uh, shared between the client and the, uh, the chama and, and the, the, the audit. Future steps uh, in OWASP, we would like to integrate better the develop the code review and the testing guide, and uh, improve the client side security. Uh, and okay, so I thank all the authors of the version three of the testing guide and. We have one minute for the answer, for the question and answer. If you could repeat the question. Yeah. You have described a, a set of tests to do in a black box uh, approach. You also have said that we can have a white box approach. Code review, look at the code and see if there are vulnerabilities for the code. What would be the balance to do between a white box and a black box approach? inside an organization. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, we saw that uh, many companies uh, require web application penetration tests, so the black box approach. But uh, we know that it's the last step that we, we have to do. So uh, our idea is to uh, begin to implement the control uh, in the first phase of the uh, software development life cycle. So from the guidelines and the code review. So we know that uh, doing code review is, m is more effective than doing uh, web application penetration testing. So your answer is uh, correct. The code review is, uh, is better, <laughs> it's better for, uh, uh, because you can see the code, you can see everything about the code and see, okay, in this line, in this component, you have a problem. And uh, you can uh, um, write down the, the, uh, the remediation immediately. And uh, instead, if, if you do a black box code, a black box uh, assessment, uh, you know that there is a vulnerability, but maybe you don't know where in, inside uh, your software. And uh, it's more complicated, and uh, it's another phase of the development, so more cost, and uh, it's okay. Other questions? Thank you.